going on guys? Ronan here with Drummer's Guide to Gear. We've got Chris Hornbrook. Uh, questions and answers. Uh, well, he's on tour with Census Video. Um, how has the tour gone so far? Good. Good. It's like today is like show six, I believe, cool. um, in the winter, so limbs are tight all the time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Even after you stretch and you warm up, you get on stage and it's just everything's a bit more of a, a workout than it should be. Right. Like, the, yeah, like a spring or summer tour. It's always that first song or two that's um, a little I mean, bit of a warm up. Dude, it depends on how cold it is. If it's like an insanely cold, it's like half the set. Right. And then at the end, like, yeah, it's not. It's not so we don't have a lot of breaks in our set either, and we play like an hour. So right. in doing that, it's, it's, it's a bit much. It can be a bit much. Yeah. How, uh, how far is the tour plan of going? How far? How many shows you guys have booked? Oh, uh, it's, it's December 19th. We're just basically doing the entire U.S. Um, started in Rochester, crossing over the West Coast, and then crossing back over down to like the Florida area, back up to the East Coast, and then ending in Hartford. Wow, you guys are going all over the place. Yeah, yeah. It's been very... It's, the tour is busy, but it's also been a really busy year. Right, right. Absolutely. Uh, what projects do you have going on besides Census Fail? Um, so I'm working with Census Fail. I also play with this other band called uh, Big Black Delta, which is like uh, electronic pop music. Okay, cool. And then I've been a long time member of Poison the Well, uh, since I'm like 18 years old. Awesome. And that kind of comes in and out of existence uh, more so recently. We played some shows earlier in the year, and we're just kind of trying to see what the future holds. Awesome. And uh, we've worked with other bands, and Slay Bells, with the Trash Talk, uh, with this uh, side project with the uh, Greg Pachado from the Dillinger Escape Plan. Oh, wow. Josh Eustis that uh, does this thing called Telephone Tel Aviv and was, uh, was also in Christopher and Managed Nails. Okay, cool. Uh, just recorded some drums from them a while ago and they're about to release a record. Awesome. Pretty cool. That sounds killer, man. Yeah, so yeah, that's, that's kind of occupying my time. But mostly it sets us fail because I recorded a record with them going out and Absolutely. supporting it full blast. So. Right. That's Man, that's killer. Yeah, that's do, you, do you have any big plans for 2016? Um, so far, the Census Fail is going to be going to Australia. And then there's a few other things that are kind of in the works, but um, a lot of talk, nothing concrete, but that's kind of the way it works. Uh, first bit of the year, I'm off, which is great, because I'm going to do some writing with some friends. And then, uh, then yeah, go and do that. And then summer's pretty open, and you know, just kind of see where things are going to fall. Absolutely. That's awesome, man. Mm -hmm. uh, what's the, what would you be your, would you say your favorite part of playing music? What do you find best out of music? Just like writing songs. I, I like being a part of the creative process of putting songs together, especially something that you feel is, amongst you and your friends is, uh, is special. Right. Um, that was kind of the situation I had dealt with Poison Wall for a really long time. It was like a collective of people that really kind of gave it our all and put everything in and tried to push the boundaries of what we could do as musicians, right. as songwriters, and try to get better and better and better with every record. And it was always really exciting recording and, and doing that. So that to me is the ultimate, like, I guess, pinnacle of, 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 of music for me. Absolutely. Drumming. Um, I mean, I love, obviously, you know, the guys that are just, you know, shredders and, you know, they play over progressive back tracks and all this crazy stuff and, like, that stuff's cool. Dude, but um, I just like songs. That's why I start with songs. The songs, absolutely. You know, they could be extraordinarily simple or extremely complicated. As long as the song is good, it's a well-constructed song. Like that's the most important. Right. And it's just like a, such a subjective thing. But right. you know, do you do you enjoy playing different genres of music? I do. Yeah, yeah I do. Um, I mean, I like. I want to venture further out and do more. I feel like I can be contained. With you know, metal, hardcore, punk, and rock, you know, um, and it's cool, and I've gained a lot of insight and experience, but I want to kind of go further out, like, the Big Big Black Delta is electronic pop music, a majority of the songs are like 100 to 110 BPM, so it's down to four on the floor, so it's like a whole new, well, not whole new, because I've been working with them for about three years, but it's... I, I think a little bit differently now because it's a burst of music and it's drums and bass and you know, finding the right BPM to make people dance. His approach is different than saying what Poison the Wall was or what Sense of Spell is. So it's just another new thing to kind of learn. Absolutely. But I definitely like to venture off and just do as much stuff as I possibly can. Just 
be the best I can be. Never stop learning. Never stop pushing. Absolutely. What uh, genre would you say that you want to explore next? The most collection genre that you have you not touched base with that interests you the most? Uh, I like Latin a lot. I um, think Latin's really, really interesting. I like a lot of the um, past year, year or two, I've been diving more into like uh, going back and forth between Brazilian and African Cuban because they're different. Um, trying to learn more of that, but the problem is if you learn it and you get really good at it, and then you go on tour and you don't apply it. Right. And not that it goes away, you just kind of put it on hold for a little bit and come back and you try to do it. Ah, I'm a little rusty, you can play it for a little bit, okay, I'm good again, and then go on tour. So, uh, and it's just like a vicious cycle. Right, absolutely. So, uh, Latin and uh, hip hop, probably. Probably those two. You know, like just straight, you know, like no, not much toms, like just straight pocket and, you know, that sort of, absolutely. That sort of feel. That's, that's definitely a, a wide variety from what you're used to playing, I'm sure. Yeah, I, I've tried that too. I'd, like, I would go home and see the kick drum and huge hi-hats and, you know, uh, a nice pitch and snare drum here that's like pitched really high, then like a, a, a snare drum over here that's pitched really low, like really odd sounding cymbals, and just trying to mainly just like focus on like a, you know, just put on songs and play along with like Judello or like Fuji's or Kanye West and just try to understand like where all the the drums and the pulse and everything is sitting and mm -hmm. what sounds are coming out and just kind of dive into that and get good at it. That's awesome, man. That's, that's killer. Um, obviously, we were talking about drums and that you are a drummer and you like yeah. to play drums. What kind of kit are you playing on? What kind of gear are you using right now? Um, so the kit I'm playing on is uh, Q Drum Co. Uh, mahogany. Uh, drum kit with uh, maple, maple uh, reinforcement rings. It has a vintage uh, marine wrap, so it's kind of tanned out. It's not like the normal white. It's green. It's you know kind of a beige-ish vibe to it. Um, Diecast tubes on all the toms because it just kind of focuses the sound a little bit. Uh, DW hardware, um, all nine thousand stuff, social stuff, a lot of like K stuff and normal A stuff like medium thin. Uh, Symbols and then heads are Evans uh, clear G2s and Toms clear G G1s on the resonant bottoms. Um, snare is uh, just G2 and then the kick is an EQ3, I believe. Okay, cool. Um, and then sticks are ProMark uh, 4 Balance 595. Okay, great sticks uh, 5B. And um, yeah, I mean, that's all kind of the stuff I've been. I'm playing with them. The snare drums for my kit. I have um, my primary right now is a, a 40 by 7 aluminum plate snare drum with a brush patina. Sounds fantastic. Um, triple French hoops. And then my backup snare, which sometimes is my main because I just kind of swap them out. Mm -hmm. One tour I'll use the aluminum, and then another tour I'll use, uh, tour I'll use the brass plate, which okay. is the same thing, 40 by 7, weighs like 20 pounds, die cast tubes. Wow. Only eight lugs on it. Um, sounds fantastic. It, it's like a mix between a black beauty and uh, a black brass. Okay, cool. Best of, best of both worlds. Right. As a musician, what is your favorite part of going on tour? Playing, playing a good show. Going up on stage and just nailing everything. Right. That's like the most important thing to me. You know, you can have a shitty day, the weather could be awful, you could have shitty meals, have a shitty drive, everything could just fucking suck. The most important thing is that the 30 to 45 minutes to an hour or hour plus that you're playing, that you're just, you're in it, you're giving everything that you have, you're nailing everything, you're playing everything with a lot of groove and feel, and uh, yeah, you just, you go up there and you kill it as much as you can. Absolutely. That's, that's, that's the most important thing for tour for me. Everything else is somewhat trivial. Uh, not necessarily true. I love to traveling. <laughs> the traveling and then just going on and killing it every night. Those are like the two. Those right. are like the two most like important things for me. That's awesome, man. Yeah. yeah I mean, it sounds like you enjoy yourself when you do it big time. You know, that's. I do. Yeah. I mean, I. I, I just. I mean, this is like. This is something that I love to do, and I figured out when I was 12 years old that this is what I wanted to do, and I've just been pushing as hard as I can to achieve it because. Life is not a, a straight road. There's a lot of twists and turns and surprises, and you understand, you start to understand your limitations as, as a human being, as a player, and you have to improve upon those and figure that out. So it's like, 
I don't come from like a, I'm not a prodigy, I don't come from that sort of background. I just come from a general love and passion for music and drumming and, you know, to try to develop a good work ethic and push myself as hard as I can and be the best that I can be. That's awesome. That's the way it should be. Great. Uh, last question that I have for you. Uh, what's the best memory you have of ever going on tour? If you had to pick one, because I know there's going to be a lot. Yeah, there's a lot. Um, you can even narrow it down to like the top three if you want. Well, I think the most important one was I was 17 years old and Poison Wall had just started. And uh, we were doing a winter tour or a summer tour. I think it was like a summer tour. I was still in high school. I think I was in 11th grade or going from 11th to 12th grade. And they're like, hey, we booked this tour. And, you know, it was done through the most DIY fashion. You know, back then it was like America Online and you know, contact people in different cities and they'd set up shows and, you know, nothing really firm. You could show up and not get paid or the club could be closed. Or the, right. it, there's so many. It's, it's so different uh, now than it was back then. But it was just basically just jumping in an RV, an RV, a uh, fucking minivan, or, 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 yeah. <laughs> a minivan with six dudes and like driving from Florida all the way up to Vermont mm-hmm. and playing, we played about two weeks worth of shows. We were there for two weeks, we played six or seven shows and came home and I think that was the most important thing because that's what like started it. You know, we all had to throw money in. I think it threw like 150 to 200 bucks to you know, pay for gas. Obviously, you have to pay for my food. Right. Nobody made any money, but that I think that's the most important because it's like the first one. Right. It's like the first. Like if that never happened, I might not be here. I may not have done all things that I did and like work with the people that I worked with and met people and like been a part of something really cool and really special. Right. And so I think that's that. That is the most important. You know, honestly, that would have probably been my same answer if I was in your shoes. Yeah. To me, the most important thing is, you know, where you come from, you know, and how you start. Yeah. You know? Without a start, there's no continuum. You know? Yeah, I mean, I come from, like, a working background. Um, you know, like I said, I started in a minivan. I played bass lights. I played 100 cap clubs, and I, I've done... That's where it started, and, you know, it, it's... I've played everything above that. I've played arenas and amphitheaters and, and everything in between, and it's like... I understand what it takes to to get it going. I understand the dedica- dedication and the work ethic and what you have to do. And that sometimes it's not going to be easy, but if you really believe in what you want and you can see where you need to go, just don't be lazy. Just right. push, you know, and you'll eventually get there. I guess that spins off one last question that I have to ask. <laughs> okay. And this one might be a little personal, but okay. what's uh, what's the worst memory you have of being on tour? Uh, getting robbed. You know? oh. um, that's next that's awful. next to like being in a, a serious accident. That's like the worst. Oh man! I never. We were never in a serious accident, but next to that is having all your belongings taken. We Poison Wild was robbed at different points, to different degrees. Did the first time we got robbed. We were in Montreal, uh, so we cracked our trailer, so our yeah. guitar player's bag that had a bunch of money in it. Um, you know, it took guitars and equipment um, up until semi-recently, like semi-recently, like 2009, where we had our, all of our van, our van, all our gear, and our trailer ripped off. Oh, like, just yeah. straight up, and we just had just started a tour. So we kind of pieced things together and kept going, but we were really lucky. We, uh, we had an insurance policy on our, on our equipment, so it, it helped us kind of, once we got home and the settlement was finished, that we could buy gear again and kind of you know, start from, from point A, opposed right. to being like, all right, well, we just lost $8,000 worth of gear. Like, what do we do? Right. You know? Well, that's awesome, you know, that you guys got that insurance settlement. Yeah. You know, there's always going to be bumps on the road, like you had said. But, yeah. I mean, whatever helps you keep going forward is what's important, and that's why you're here today. Yeah, I mean, that's that's the most important thing, you know. It's not like good work, I think. It's seeing where you want to go and really be dedicated to it. You know, it's, if you're not dedicated, you can have all the talent in the world if you're not dedicated to it. You know, you know, like, right. Um, and I've kind of learned that having a good work ethic gets you where you need to go. Right. So, try to be as proactive and as like forward pushing as like that's awesome. Well, ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. Chris Warbrook from Census Fail.
Uh, I just want to give you a big thank you for doing this interview with us. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Nice to have you.